A recent poll shows it is a very close contest in the race for governor here in California. But a quarter of likely voters in California actually still undecided. Joining us right now, former eBay CEO, of course, Republican gubernatorial candidate, Ms. Meg Whitman. Meg, thanks for joining us, first of all. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Thank uh, you. You know, the first thing I wanted to address this because it shocked me when I found out that 25% of people are undecided. And usually when you see those polls, you see maybe three, four, five, six. 25%, what can you do to try to get those voters perhaps on your side? So what I want to convince voters of is I am the very best person to fix the economy in California. The number one issue is jobs. If we do not put Californians back to work, there is no way out of this mess. And I have, I'm a business person. I'm not actually a politician. I'm a business person. I've created jobs. I've met budgets. I have done, figured out how to do more with less. And that is a, actually a really important thing for the state right now. Which brings us to the main topic everybody's been talking about the last couple of weeks and months. The amount of money that you have spent so far in this campaign, the primary and so far in the a couple of weeks since close to a hundred million dollars most of that is your own money whereas Jerry Brown maybe has not spent anywhere near that much what is your response to people that saying that you're just throwing too much money into this you're literally buying your candidacy you're buying the governor's seat what do you say to that well, first is, I think Californians are really smart. You can't buy an election. What you can do is get your message out. And Jerry Brown has been in politics for 40 years. I've been in politics for about 18 months. So I have to get that message out. I'll also say Jerry Brown um, is running what I call Jerry Brown Incorporated. His campaign is being financed by the public employee unions in the state of California. So you have to look at the union spending as well. And unions have the opportunity to spend up to, you know, 50 to $100 million on this campaign. And millions have been spent for Jerry Brown from the unions as well. Absolutely, probably about 10 million thus far. So um, our job, my job, is to get that message out about how we're going to create 2 million private sector jobs by 2015, how we're going to get government spending under control, and a, a concern to everyone is how on once and for all we're going to fix our K-12 through education and that, system. And that's a good question. We'll get to that in a moment. But first, since you brought sure. up Jerry Brown and the whole CEO versus running and being a politician, he was on our show back on July 14th right here where you're sitting. And here's what he had to say about exactly the difficulties of running the state of California versus being a CEO of a company. Let's listen in and get your reactions afterwards. The governor is not like a CEO, a president of a company. Uh, he has to persuade the legislature, and he has to get a two-thirds vote for the major issues. And that's pretty darn hard when they're all polarized. And it takes patience, it takes insight, and I would say it'd be helpful to, to know the process. Your response, Meg? Well, first of all, um, it is a tough job. But I think the main thing is leadership and focus on what is the most important thing. And the issue is jobs. And I will tell you, I am the only one who's created jobs, who's balanced a budget, and who has actually understands the needs of small business. And I will say, Jerry may say he has experience. I tell you, his first run at governor, it was not a good run. Unemployment nearly doubled to what was then a record 11%. Spending went up dramatically. He increased taxes. So, um, you know, I think it depends on what kind of experience you want, I will bring experience of getting the budget under control and creating the environment for small businesses to grow and thrive. If we're going to be let out of this recession, small businesses have to lead us out. Okay, you got to know in the campaign trail, a lot of folks say, we're going to do this, we need to do this, but the, the question is always, how are you going to do yep. it? We want to go to our Twitter followers who Good. are out there, and Bob Good. from San Diego wanted to know, this is for Meg, this is his, his question Good. now. It's, it's simple enough. Your ad state that Jerry Brown has no plan. What is your plan? Ah, you're right, Jerry Brown has no plan. And I've got a very detailed plan around those important priorities. But let's take jobs because it's the most important. I want to do some targeted tax cuts to get hires, to get uh, hiring uh, going again. For example, I want to eliminate the factory tax. I don't know if you know, but we're one of only three states that taxes manufacturing equipment, which is a disincentive to manufacture here. I want to streamline regulation. Regulation is strangling businesses of all sizes. And then I want to compete for jobs. You know, we lose jobs to Arizona, Colorado, Texas, Utah, and I want to have a terrific economic development team. You will not find a more staunch supporter of small business than me. But that sounds easier said than done, correct? Because once you actually get in the governor's office and actually try to get that done, ah. you got to know that once you're in that office, it's not just as simple as saying, I'm going to get these jobs to stay in California, I'm going to take away that factory tax. Yeah. 
Well, first of all, you've got to have the right people in your administration. And uh, turns out the governor of California gets 3,000 appointments to his or her administration. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. The president of the United States gets 3,800. So those people have to be the right people in the right job at the right time because a lot of work can be done within the administration. And here's the really good news for the people of California. Because I'm not a politician, I don't owe anyone anything. And so those people will be the right people. They will not be political payback from a career in politics. Okay. And then you got to work with the legislature. And I want to focus that legislature on the things that matter most to Californians. And can you work with the legislature? Absolutely. Being not, you know, you've said, you said you're only 18 months in politics yeah. or whatever it's been. Can you work with the legislature? Do you know the process? Absolutely. And uh, first is the legislature's become a bill factory. Mm -hmm. Last year, they served up nearly 2,000 pieces of legislation, signed into law 700 pieces of legislation. Virtually none of it was on point to the crisis we face. So let's focus the legislature. I will use the veto pen aggressively. And let's build coalitions around jobs. Let's build coalitions around making our schools great, as opposed to signing into law things that don't make a difference to everyday Californians. I want to see, if you were in the governor's office now, during the last couple of years when Governor Schwarzenegger has been in there, how would you handle a California budget? Would you have done the furlough days that the governor has done? The budget is always late. How do you fix that? There's yeah. always talking about we're going to fix it. How do you actually get it done properly? Yeah. Well, first, I would have gone after making the government more efficient and effective. The waste in the government is simply remarkable. And I've identified $15 billion worth of spending cuts that we can go after over a couple of years. First is we have to shrink the size of government. Second, we have to go after the public employee pensions. You probably know the pension benefits will sink this state. You've had your own issues in San Diego with public employee pension <laughs> yes, indeed, benefits. Yes, in, indeed we have. And it's exactly the same at the state. We've got to renegotiate these pension benefits. Does any of that come with job losses, however? And folks are not going to stand for having their pensions cut or their jobs lost within the state. We have to renegotiate negotiate with the unions because the truth is this will cause California to run out of money much as it almost bankrupted San Diego and you've got to have a leader in the state who can stand up and negotiate with the unions there is one of the big differences between Jerry Brown and me he is beholden to the unions the unions are financing his campaign as a result I don't think he's going to take on the tough work of um, renegotiating these benefits and having new public employees come in under a different deal Got to get your thoughts on the, on the issues of the day, obviously. Uh, quickly, we're going to run through these mm -hmm. because otherwise we'd stay here for three hours sure. talking about them. I need your thoughts on Prop 8. Explain your thoughts. It's in the appeals process right now. Should marriages be allowed? to happen during the time that this appeals is going on right now in California? So um, I am not for gay marriage. I am for strong civil union laws, which we have here in California. And my view is the, uh, you know, the, the process needs to, to go on here. We shouldn't have an administrative action that uh, creates uncertainty at this juncture. So my bias is let's let the, uh, the legal process continue. Okay, the Arizona immigration law. Right. So um, I have been very clear on this. I don't think the Arizona immigration law is the right thing for California. And the reason is I've got a better plan to solve the illegal immigration problem in California. I want to secure the borders. I want to hold employers accountable only for hiring documented workers. We've got to have a guest worker program for our agricultural industry. And then I want to eliminate sanctuary cities, of which San Francisco is obviously the case in point. And you've said the law in Arizona simply wouldn't work for California. Why wouldn't it? Well, the issue is we, um, we have got to find a way to stop the, the inflow of illegal immigration. And the first thing we have to do is secure the border. I had a very interesting day here in San Diego. Mm -hmm. I spent a day on the border between Mexico and California. And we, those Border Patrol agents need yeah. more resources, need more What did technology. you see that led you to that conclusion? They are, um, you know, really, uh, they just are not properly resourced. The Border Patrol agency is not big enough. The, we don't have motion detector, infrared uh, technology. There's much more we can do to secure this border. And uh, I know why the people of Arizona rose up. They said, we're just frustrated. But I think i got a much better plan that will be uniquely suited to California. Okay. Like I said, we could probably stin, spend the next two, three hours talking about Final question, are you a charge? Fan? I am a Charger fan, actually. Are you really? <laughs> I've been to a couple of Charger games, and I'm hoping they're going to have a good season. There you go. Meg Whitman, Republican candidate for governor of California. Meg, we thank you for your time. Hopefully thank we'll you very much. I appreciate it. But for November, it's going to be a busy couple of months. For it you. is, but I'd be delighted to come back. Thank you very much. Okay, Sean.